talk to me first off, uh, what do you think of the ruling today from uh, the judge? Uh, I'm obviously very gratified and, and frankly not surprised. I've been waiting for this decision for a long time, even long before making a murderer. Um, it's, I was disappointed that the state courts didn't see what the federal court obviously did, and any fair person I think would see, which is that the, uh, the confession of Brendan Dassey was obviously coerced, that it was fed to him uh, fact after fact. Um, that they were making false promises to him. Don't worry, Brendan, we'll go to bat for you. We already know what happened. You just got to tell us what we know, quote unquote. And if you do, then things will be fine for you. And they never expected or intended things to be fine for him. They were going to arrest him. They just needed him to confess their version of the events. So, um, frankly, this could have been resolved years ago if the state courts had been more um, fair and unbiased. But, you know, as we all know, state courts are elected positions and try as judges might t to be fair. It's very hard. They're humans. Very hard not to be concerned about the effect, the negative effect, if you take an unpopular decision uh, and apply the law the way it should be applied especially nowadays when there's so much money being pumped into elections, Court of Appeals and Supreme Court. Um, if you, you know, if you're a judge and you issue the wrong decision that's going to be unpopular, you're going to have somebody uh, running against you and a bunch of money, a lot of the dark money, uh, whereas federal courts have the opportunity because they're appointed, they're, they're like the last bastion for all of our rights. You know, they're, they're the ones who can apply the law the way it's supposed, supposed to be applied. And that goes all the way back to the civil rights era. Now, obviously, you're not Brendan Dassey's attorney, but I guess how involved with you or how much did you know about his case with Stephen Avery's? I'm very intimately familiar with the facts of his confession, so-called confession. I, you know, it, up until the last week of the trial, a uh, week before Stephen's trial, we were not sure whether Brendan Dassey would be called as a witness for the state in our case. Um, and so I knew that, that his, he couldn't tell a consistent story from one time to the next because he's telling something that didn't happen. It's all made up and he has no memory of it because it didn't occur. So ultimately they were worried about calling him as a witness and I've, I thought it would actually help us by showing the, the, the lengths the state was willing to go to try and convict Stephen Avery was to take this 16-year-old kid, you know, unexperienced with law enforcement, with mental limitations, special ed classes, and to apply these psychologically coercive techniques of of questioning that these officers go to school to learn, uh, in order to to f try and put pressure on him, get him to confess, and then hopefully, in their minds, get him to flip and testify against his uncle. So you wanted him on the stand. For, from the, uh, for the prosecution? Uh, yes, we were ready for him. We were ready to show the jury why this confession was false, how it was co coerced, all the false promises of leniency that they were giving him. And it would have, uh, if anything, bolstered our argument that they are going to uh, outrageous lengths. If they would go this far to turn a 16-year-old uh, with you know, special ed class limitations uh, against his uncle and charge him with this serious a crime, then who's to say they wouldn't have gone farther in the other steps that we argued the evidence seemed to indicate of trying to frame Stephen Avery? Now, obviously this is applying to Brendan's case, but what does this mean to Stephen Avery's case? Well, the state probably will argue that, you know, we never used Brendan's confession in Stephen's case, so it shouldn't matter at all. Um, but they did use Brendan's so-called confession in the press conference that the special prosecutor called, two of them actually, in which he, you know, polluted the jury pool statewide um, by telling them that this was a true confession and um, when they knew, when they were saying it, they knew that there was no evidence that would support it. All the physical evidence disproved it. 
Um, there was no bloody murder, torture, rape, nothing that happened in that house. Um, and they, they already knew that. And yet they told the public otherwise. And they used the confession of Brendan Dassey in order to pollute the jury so that in Stephen's case, 129 of 130 jury questionnaires that came back, the people that we had to pick a jury from, all but one of them said, we think Stephen Avery's guilty before they heard a, a shred of evidence in court. So it does have and did have a direct effect on Stephen Avery's ability to get a fair trial. So you think that, that can be used um, in the... Uh, in uh, you know, ultimately, I don't represent Stephen right now, and that's going to be up to his new attorneys. He's got a very good, competent, uh, skilled team of lawyers working for him, and they will decide, you know, if and how to use this decision today to Stephen's benefit, along with all of the other uh, investigation and evidence that they've been marshalling to try and get Stephen a new trial. Had this come out, or you know, maybe even had they had they thrown this out originally, what what would have that meant to um, Stephen's case? You know, had had this started day one, that they would have said, you know, Brandon Dassey's confession should not be allowed in. Well, the the question would have been then whether, you know, uh, Brendan would have been testifying uh, for the defense in Stephen Avery's case. Um, to show just what they went through, what he, they put him through to try and get to Stephen, um, and to show how, um, you know, the, the links that they were willing to go to. And, you know, don't forget that uh, Brendan was, uh, one of the reasons I think they targeted him was that he was an easy target um, because of his uh, lack of education and maturity and age and all of that, but uh, he also was an alibi for Stephen because he was with him at various times during that evening and he knew nothing happened. So they were trying to get rid of a, a witness for Stephen that would support his defense. Um, so I, you know it's hard to speculate exactly how things would have, uh, how the case would have differed. So you could have maybe even used him as an alibi witness in court or that is something that was that's certainly That's case. certainly what he was initially when the police in, interviewed him and they were trying way back in November uh, when the, the case was first charged against Stephen, they were trying to flip him at that point and, and couldn't and didn't. Um, so, it, you know, how that would have changed the trial is hard to say. Um, I guess for you moving forward, obviously you're not, you're not Stephen's attorney anymore, but I guess, does, does this mean anything different for you or for um, the case you tried? Well, I think about it, what it hopefully will mean is uh, for the general public, uh, to, you know, to realize that um, you know there's, there's a long and sordid tale that's been going on for many years here in this in Manitowoc County, and um, you know I, I'm hopeful at this point that the, the state finally recognizes that and decides not to appeal and, and in fact not to retry. Uh, Brendan Dassey. At this point, I don't know how they would get a, a jury to convict him. 19 million people watched Making a Murderer, at least, that we know of, uh, according to some estimates. Um, many, many more will be watching if they try to retry him. And, uh, you know, it, all it's going to do is embarrass the state and the county of Manitowoc even more, more than they've already gone through. So I'm hopeful that the, at, at some point, you know, cooler heads will, with more objectivity, will look at this case now and look at this judge's decision. It's 91 pages, very well written, very well researched, citing all of the quotes and uh, facts from the case. Mm -hmm. um, and that hopefully they'll, they'll step back, take a look at it and say, enough is enough. The young man's been in prison for 10 years. Let's dismiss the case and free him. Okay. Sounds good. If you can actually roll forward here so we can get some um, cutaway shots. B-roll or whatever they call like, it. Yeah, looking like we're having a conversation. I should have had the decision.